Hi everybody, this is Priska and Christina with this week's Truth Bombs and Bloopers and um, we're going to talk about the subject of life purpose and motherhood or life purpose versus motherhood or life purpose and motherhood, and motherhood or slash and motherhood slash motherhood and um yeah we when we talked about this week's energies um kind of we always check in on our own energy forecasts um i felt a strong um energy around life purpose that for a lot of people right now the the questions around life purpose come up onto the surface and we have to re redefine and reevaluate what what is really important for us and so we would love to talk about this today and before we dive in Priska what was your truth bomb this week yeah. I wasn't sure if I wanted to make a truth bomb about hair tutorials and how shitty my hair looks today and if I couldn't <laughs> find my real hairdo today or um, about um, motherhood or about, I don't know, there was so much stuff coming up um, with me this, this week. Um, and that's why also we were going to talk about motherhood because I think it's very much interconnected with the, like for us women, especially uh, in the whole um, purpose, life purpose, life missions question. But a truth bomb of this week. Let me see. I have gone down the rabbit hole of all the conspiracy theories. Um, and I think the truth bomb of my week is don't believe everything that you see and hear. Like just stay connected to your own intuition, to your own truth. And like, um, just don't believe everything that people think is the truth. And just because everybody thinks it's the truth, it doesn't have to be the truth. Like it really is like, it just hit me so hard. It's something new actually. And I have been thinking about that many times before. And, and um, but you know, we, we are taught, okay, this blue thing is the sky. This thing is called a bird, you know, like this mm -hmm. is what a woman has to look like. You know, this is what a beautiful woman has to look like. And we're all brainwashed in a certain way about certain things. And when we see things in the news and in the media, we just think that's true. And especially when there are pictures, we think it's true because we don't even question the truth of what's being shown to us mm -hmm. and um when i'm saying this it's not that i mean that everything that conspiracy theor theorists are saying is true i'm just saying because this too can be faked right it's just like we are so conditioned to believe everything that like has is being brought to us via media also films via radio via music via stars and this all kind of infiltrates us in some way and i think it's so important that we start to look behind this smoke screen and see that there's so much more happening than you think there is or something and different. How do you, yeah. And how do you protect yourself against the outside influence? I don't even think that I have to protect myself. It's like the antidote for me is just being aware, like being aware that things can be different. And of course it's also having good boundaries up, you know, like just putting, like shutting things down when I feel I'm overwhelmed or, you know, um, and going out into nature, like really reconnecting with, with my own truth, with my own feelings, what I'm, I'm actually feeling in my body. Mm -hmm. um, and um, just keeping an open mind, you know, just knowing that just because X, Y, and Z is saying that this is how it is, doesn't mean that it's like how it is. There are always people with other interests behind that. And to just see, okay, what does feel true to me? Um, and I think that's how I protect myself. It's really just mm -hmm. staying open-minded and asking questions even if i don't get the answers because in the end we nobody really knows that's true and um anyway you're always you we will always find what you're looking for um so if you are looking for proof for what you already <clears throat> are holding inside you will find it somewhere absolutely, absolutely. and it's all about, it's all about deciding what you want to believe in the end we all have to decide what we want to believe and I'd rather believe in something that lifts me up than something that pulls me down. Mm. Um, and in the end, again, I'm aware that this is also just it, it's a choice. It's a choice because we can believe this or we can believe this. And still, while making this choice, we still can be open-minded and be open for other opinions and, and other things. And after all, have, having, said, like, having said this all, I think in the end, it's 
so important that we just stick together as humanity, as mm. people. Because no matter what you believe or what I believe, in the end, we're in this together. And all we actually have is each other and, and, and being loyal to each other. And I think that's, that's what's needed right now. You know, like not that we call the police because we see other people walking outside and, you know, like, I don't know, or, or just bashing each other for having a different belief. It's about sticking together and saying, okay, you believe something different. I do what is right for me. You do what's right for you. Yeah. And yours? My truth bomb, I think, um, so two things come up. What if you could do what you want without having to do what you think you need to do? Mm. So <laughs> letting, Powerful one. <laughs> letting the, I have to, if I choose X, Y, Z, I have to, what if there's another way? Maybe there's a shortcut. Maybe there's someone you meet on the way who helps you to get there. Yeah, like that's just, uh, I think in, in, in relation to this subject, um, redefining your life purpose, I think we're often, we often come up with fear, with conditioning, from past experiences so let's say i i chose i chose a path and i made a really uncomfortable experience now um this this experience is always connected with choosing this path but what if we can rewire that in our in our subconscious and then find another way to get there that's kind of um yeah and how much we are the other truth bomb of this week, how much we are manifesting through our uh, subconscious. And I mean, we can, we can live positive and we can have positive thoughts and change our thoughts every day. But if we still in the deepest, deepest core still believe that <clears throat> we are not enough or we are bad at this or, or we we will never get there then we will always attract those people and those situations who show us that we are not enough that so we true. don't attract xyz that we don't um, belong or have no value so that's kind of the two truth bombs and um yeah but but in general i feel like the the overall energy is much lighter then it was last week I felt last week I felt it very dense and mm -hmm. and now it feels already a bit lighter yeah I also have the feeling people get more used to the new yeah. reality mm. that's currently here or you know more easing into it it's more okay yeah we have corona and it's okay and we just make the best of what we have mm. Mm -hmm. yeah I feel that too yes and in terms of motherhood, um, why did this come up for you this week? Um, it always is something that is, it, it's very much in my space. I'm, I'm a stepmother of two, of a 14-year-old girl and a 12-year-old boy. Uh, and I'm not a biological mom. And funnily enough, I, like the, the whole thing that activated, I, it's a topic that keeps coming because mm -hmm. I have actually uh, the wish of having a child. But it's also not like super, super, you know, like I need to have one. Mm -hmm. It's like not this, I'm not one of these women who have the feeling they need a child in order to be, to be happy or to have their life purpose, to make the connection mm -hmm. um, fulfilled. I've never had that. It was just when I was actually with my ex-boyfriend, um, all of a sudden I, I felt this girl like with me. Um, and I could see her, I could like, I could really, I, I got to know her, I dreamt about her. She was so real. Mm -hmm. And, um, I really was so sure that she would be my child. It was, there was no question like, okay, this is the girl that's coming, but she never came. Mm -hmm. Um, um, because my, my ex partner didn't want to have kids with me as we were just like, it was the wrong person he wanted later with another woman. He did want to have kids, but it's another story. Um, but, um, like and my current partner that I'm with, or just my man, because I want to marry and stick with this guy. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but he had uh, cancer in 2010. He had 18 chemos and a stem cell transplantation. So he's like 
like it is infertile now. Um, and I cannot like doctors say there's no way that we're going to have kids. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is a reality I have to live with. Of course, like, I'm also aware miracles can happen always. But also, I, I, I have to be realistic with myself because otherwise I will be every month when I get my period just devastated because mm -hmm. it's again, it didn't happen, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, we had this whole discussion about, you know, whether we want to have like a sperm donor or, um, yeah, I don't know, like adopt or whatever. But I never felt a clear yes for that. Also, yeah. because I know my, like my, my husband-to-be um, is 11 years older than I am. I mean, again, my stepkids are teenagers. Mm. Like it would be like a, such a step back again and starting all over. Also, I would then like my brain starts to work. It's like, I also want to have time with him because right now we, we got together when there were kids already. You know, we didn't mm. have that face that normally people have where you get to meet each other and travel together. And, you know, like having this couple time only because bi-weekly there are these kids. And I love these kids like so much. I cannot even start telling how much I love these kids and it's like I'm so one of these very lucky stepmoms where it's like like you know mutual that they also mm -hmm. love me um still it's not the same I think as as it is uh, having this biological child so it's a, a reoccurring thing in my life it comes in waves it's something I talk openly about also I had I had a whole videos published when we were actually having a discussion about you know Oh yeah, maybe we can link these videos yes, that would be maybe that. helpful for other people. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it was it was very emotional, and I know Christina was part of that because she always felt me. I don't know how you always do that because you're always like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly when I had a child yeah. crisis. Yeah, but it it was so interesting because like, I I think it I was in Bali maybe a year ago. Was it there the first? I don't know, but it, I I dreamt about your your girl and in in my dream her name was emma and then the next day you wrote me mm -hmm. and you said oh um can can, can we can we talk uh, um i have i have this child thing coming up again and i was i I'm, um, i need to talk and i said wow i think i really felt it because i dreamt about your emma. girl emma yeah. <laughs> and then and Today, when you talked about motherhood, I saw her again next to you, and um, I, I can describe how she looks like, and she's so real to me. So, some somewhere in in some form, she's really she's here. There. I can yeah. I can I can really feel and see and even it's see so, her. It's crazy, and it's also crazy that you call her Emma because Emma was the name yeah. I wanted to give to my girl. You know, I I knew it was Emma, and mm -hmm. the funny thing, like the really funny thing, is that my stepkids are my Eddies, and I'm her. And they're Emma, the mm, yes. extra mom, extra mm -hmm. mom with like Emma. So it's mm -hmm. so funny that I became Emma now. Like, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah, but it's, it's amazing that you can see, I cannot see her anymore. She left. I don't even remember when she left energetically in a way that I could not connect with her in a way I did anymore. But yeah, I still get, you know, like it's, it's a journey. It's, sometimes I get very, very sad because I literally miss her. I really mm -hmm. miss her energy in my life. And I, was so looking forward to meeting her you know mm -hmm. I even have bought like I have even bought her a, a little dresslet once when I was on an oh, really yes I still have it somewhere um because I knew okay this is the dress that my daughter is going to wear and mm -hmm. it's so for me almost like it I, I sometimes cannot wrap my head around it that she didn't come because it yep. was so clear um especially as I never really want a kid you know I really up till my I think how old was I 2011 was that how old was I in 2011? Uh, 28, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or not. I don't know. Uh, 28, yes. Uh, then all of a sudden, like from, it, so it changed all of a sudden and I had this big, like, okay, this is my girl and I need to give birth to her. It was so strange. So I thought, okay, this is how like the universe is talking, telling me that I'm going to be a mom. And um, it's so funny that it didn't happen. But yeah. Like, I don't know what the reason is, if there's a bigger purpose, if she was needed somewhere else, or if I was needed somewhere else, you don't, you don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We, I mean, it's still open. It's still in the air. You never know. You never know. That's yeah. true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. And um, because you, I mean, like you are one of my heroes, sheroes, I mean, <laughs> who is managing, you know, you're 
sometimes I cannot wrap my head around how you manage this all because I'm being a stepmom, right? Only biweekly because they're a week with us and a week with their mom. Um, and I'm having a business and a relationship and everything. But you, I mean, like you have like, you're a dancer, you're a painter, you're um, a yoga teacher, you're a coach, <laughs> you're like a choreographer, you're everything and much more. Um, and then you're a mom. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, everyone who knows life design, I'm a manifesting generator yeah. and this explains a lot. Yeah. And we can link, uh, maybe we can add a link about um, life design yeah. because it helped me a lot to figure out why I work best with different projects because that's something I... I'm still doubting about myself or I was still doubting about myself until I found life design. I was thought, why can I not focus on one, just one role, one, and that was my whole life like that. But if I, why can I not just be a choreographer? Just mm -hmm. that. Um, or just mother or just, and then uh, when I found life design, it explained that I function the best with, 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 80 different projects <laughs> where I could put my, my energy. Nutritionist, and, I forgot. You also uh, did tons about food. Yeah, where I can put all my ideas in. And um, yeah. And for me, motherhood was so much part of my purpose. Like I, when I think, I don't know when I talked about that for the first time, but I... I remember around when I was around 14 years old, I already knew I will have wow. children. Wow. And I think when I got together with my husband, with Chris, I, I could have, I would have been ready immediately. I think we, we were 24 years old when we got together. Um, but then he had, he still had to finish his studies and he wasn't ready. But then when we were both ready, you know, I even I I mean I was I got pregnant really quickly with 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 my first child, I think the third month wow. of trying. Wow. And the two and I thought like I was so naive, I thought, okay, once once um I start this this project, yeah, I will get pregnant immediately. And I I only had to to, uh, to wait twice, two what? months. And you already thought like, oh my God, it's taking so long. I was so, I was so depressed when I got my period, like both times. And then the third month, I was already pregnant. And wow. with my second girl, it was like, boom. Immediately. First time. Wow. Yeah. Super fertile. So, <laughs> super fertile. And I think it was really I, I always felt like this nurturing and being a mother this felt so 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 natural and, mm -hmm. and so and i i remember once i once i became a mother i felt like yeah now i i feel so much more authentic like this piece was kind of missing and that's why i can so 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 understand and 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 yeah, I can understand so, so much how people are suffering when this doesn't work out for them. Mm. Yeah, like you said, when, when, when you think it's, uh, you, feel, you feel the child so strongly and yeah, a lot of questions um, mm -hmm. why this shouldn't be. Yes, I, like, I, I think I'm also not the average woman in this sense because it, it's not, again, it's not like this dream that I think I'm so sure I want that. Yeah. Because I always had these doubts of, um, I'm very, you know, like I'm a very giver, I'm a, I'm a giving person. And mm -hmm. I know when I, I'm a generator from human design. And when mm -hmm. I say yes to something, it's lurping me up. I'm like, I just have to see it through. Yeah. And I don't know how healthy it would have been for me to have a child and you know how much I could still live my purpose because I think there I don't know maybe I could have done it it's all theor theoretically now of course mm. um, but I don't know maybe there's a very clear and good reason for that child not to come for me and I'm also at peace with that most of the time it doesn't mean that I cannot be sad about it it doesn't mean that I cannot miss her 
Yeah. But I also love my life the way it is that I have, I can be a full t- full throttle stepmom in the weeks that they are here. Mm-hmm. And, um, um, of course it's still different because you're the stepmom. You, you don't raise the kids. You just help their mom and dad raising them and support them. But still you're there and you're like influencing them. And I had to learn that because I was constantly putting myself second row and I thought I'm not allowed and I have to step back. And, you know, we had so many conversations about that because it was really hard for me to find the place. And I'm still finding that, you know, like where exactly is my spot in that family without trying to be a mom and still being there and present, you know, to find this, this very thin line. And there are so many people telling so many things and you read so many things. And I really had to learn that I had to let go of all of this because just because it works for X and Y and Z, it doesn't have to work for our system. And um, I also felt that when I tried to adapt some things that was not really coming from myself, that the kids were also responding like, eh? what is she doing now? You know, I really felt like I just have to go with the flow. Um, but anyhow, I was like, just see, okay, maybe I can just be the best stepmom I can be. And yeah, and I, I was just, I, wh- while you were talking, I got this image that, you know, when you have mother and father, it's like this line um, of parents and then the children. Mm-hmm. And w- while you were talking, I, I saw a triangle. Hmm. So these, these children just have a triangle as a, as a support team and, and not this That's line. So beautiful. And, and you, each corner is equally important. It's not that, um, of course, the mother has her, her values that only a biological mother can give and, and, and the father. But then, I mean, that's why I like the word bonus mother, yeah. because this, you can give so much value, extra value, bonus value to the children. So never doubt that. Yeah. I think that's that's my journey and I think this is why I got Eddie's and why I'm Emma because Mm -hmm. I had to also let go of these ideas how a family has to look like Mm. you know there were so many traditional pictures also in my mind and um yeah and there was this constant conflict because it didn't fit nothing fitted in some way and and I didn't know like what are my rights and I didn't want to you know I never wanted to be one of these stepmoms who kind of act like the kids were theirs you know like but yep. still you're there with them i mean like you bring them to bed in this weeks you cook for them you mm-hmm. dry their mm-hmm. tears when they're there or you i mean like or you clean their puke when they're having mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah. an upset stomach you, you're there right in this mm-hmm. moment and sometimes it was such a struggle for me then to yeah it was it's it was really a big mess i think this is we could feel a whole other podcast about how like stepmoming um and i know i'm still in a blessed, I'm very blessed um, stepmom, um, and still then it's complicated because people yeah. expect things from you, and people, oh, everybody has an opinion. Oh, people have also opinion about moms, by the way. I think if people just yeah, and I was just them. gonna say also maybe also including um, the parents who are divorced or separated. That's another system that I think um, many are who who are in the situation are suffering from because it's not the traditional traditional situation and yes so there are many forms of parenting but what's what's very um important right now i think is that these family structures within the context of the pandemic that we are in are really tested oh yes (laughs) (laughs) Yes. and um are and we're invited to to clear what's not working and um, I don't know I mean you hear so many different stories what's going on in in these homes but something I want to share is um, what I read today um, for all the parents at home who think that they're working from home while homeschooling um, Mm -hmm. just remember that you are homeschooling and are trying to work (laughs) next to it and don't you know i i I really dropped the expectation of my days what to achieve in one day because i really realized now i think now it's really a chance to give all my 
time to the children um, because we have the role of the teacher right now. Yeah, of everything, so, the role of everything, everything. Everybody yeah. else that somebody had in, in their lives, everything you're now. Yeah, and yeah. actually I, I had some beautiful new, um, I don't know, like kind of new, new things blossoming with my children mm -hmm. because I, have, I just took more time for them yeah. and, and kind of let my own stuff wait for a while and, and be more, um, yeah, be more like their, their teacher right now. I mean, the school teacher. How, how does that feel for you and for them? Um, I think they're, when I, I realized that when I really take their time serious and when I sit down next to them and, and, and really focus on what they have to do, they feel so seen, mm -hmm. they feel so um, valued mm -hmm. and um, like kind of talking about the projects they need to do and, 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 and maybe help them with their projects in a very creative way um, just strengthens the relationships yeah. so much. And normally they go to school, we don't really have an idea what they are doing. Yes. They come home, then they have their hobbies and there's not much time left. And often when they come home, they are tired, they need some me time. And now, um, yeah, we, we, we see them in, in, in all You're part of the process. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's, it's beautiful. I really think it's a big chance for, like, I was even thinking, you know, maybe kids are b looking back then, like when yeah. they're older, they're looking back and like, oh, I love this time. My yeah. parents had finally time for me, of course, for the people who have a good family. Yeah. Family, yeah. You know, yeah. Something interesting. But yeah, it was the time when my parents, when I actually war was with my parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And of course, there are some challenging moments, mm -hmm. like for instance, last last week when I was teaching yoga through zoom I think my younger one she forgot that I'm teaching and she oh, was oh. singing and dancing and drumming upstairs like so loud and I mean I couldn't leave and yeah tell I get her. that <laughs> it was so hard to focus and and at one point I started to to talk really loudly I think um, just to over over to overtune her her <laughs> noise and yeah that's so that's, funny yeah that's funny yeah this is stuff that happens yeah we have mm. that too in a podcast when you all of a sudden heard a, a boy singing upstairs and <laughs> burping and yeah i don't know like, like parents who have boys as like their kids i'm so curious do your boys also make all kind of strange noises constantly <laughs> constantly all day long i really have so i don't know like it's like he, just with himself he think it's cool to make all kind of strange and funny and annoying noises i'm mm -hmm. very curious to hear back from you i cannot exp uh, i cannot uh, give you feedback because i just have girls yeah it's in any ways interesting um and i had yeah you i remember nice in our last talk also when you made this beautiful meditation when i heard this burping going <laughs> rah, 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 in all kind of tones like yeah welcome to my life guys yeah yeah luckily we're wearing we're using headphones here so so yeah motherhood i think like just parenthood is like a real a real thing right now and mm -hmm. um i think it's um not for everybody because i know also many of our clients are like no space you know i feel like oh but you're not struggling with that this feeling of oh my goodness i don't have any space no i don't know i ask myself why I, I i mean i love it that we are so together and um i'm not so much triggered by not having enough room for myself when i have when I had the time like in the morning for myself, that's why I try to do it in the morning and then I'm, I can, I can be here for, for other people. And the same goes a little with what you mentioned in the beginning with like media and negative stuff that you're reading online. I really try to do my inner work first thing and move my body and meditate and journal and to, to really get into my zone and then some somehow it re repels and yeah it doesn't no, really 
I'm not okay. so, yeah. And if I would read that first thing in the morning when I wake up, when I feel like everything is upside down and all my parts are somewhere shattered and I still have to, I first have to bring everything together, then I'm kind of like a, an open, like a... Open book. Yeah, or, or like I, I suck in everything. and it Yeah, I know what you mean. You're just like... my energy extreme. Yeah, everything just gets in. You have no boundary yeah to protect yeah. yourself yeah 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 i, guess and, I understand and, that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and also maybe because we have the forest so nearby yeah so oh we, yes we go to to the forest every day and we also take our kids to the forest every morning so they have a fresh head. fresh head and and have some fresh energy before they start their their days um and and then we try to all work in different rooms. Top. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, luckily, we also, now the kids are now upstairs, most in their rooms when they're doing their stuff. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just when they need help, mostly the girl, because she's in what we call here the middle bar's hole in the, in the high, high mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. And um, so she needs more, more support. The boy doesn't actually have... Home, real homework he just has to do his uh his uh stuff and then he's done and she really has and also like bigger work that she has to do like yeah that's writing pieces or yeah, yeah. posters or something like that yeah we have that too now this week it started again and they have a whole week weekly schedule what they have to do but yeah i think they they really liked it it started yesterday and I think they were happy to have now tasks structure again. again yeah. yeah, structure to follow a plan and yeah, to, yeah. to at, at the end of the day to say, okay, we've done everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, our holidays now start here. Like I think the girl's holiday starts tomorrow, but she's at her mom's right now. And then it's, she has like the half the week and then another week and then the boys weeks they have one week together and then the boy another one they don't even have it to, together it's a bit strange mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. but it's because he's in the lower school and she's in the middle bottom so it's just like a this difference yeah yeah mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious it's in it's interesting and i think this whole topic is so big and we could talk and go on for about it forever because i think there are so many corners and um Level. Yeah, I think it's right. Yeah, especially um, how much when when we think about our life purpose, how many of the mothers really include the motherhood in their life purpose? Because I sometimes, you know, when 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 people ask me, so what is your profession or what is your mission or what's your, then I I I count everything, but then I realize. And I'm a mother, and mm. because somehow this is just a natural, like I'm, I'm a wife, yes. but that this is really um, part of your purpose, and how much that they are teachers also for us on our journey. I think we easily forget about that, and right now, um, I I just want to invite everyone who feels so stressed about the situation that um just take this role right now as a as a a goal or a purpose to do that fully really well and fully and, yeah, and that is enough right that yeah is that enough. is enough yeah. yeah yeah because i think so many get caught up then oh but i don't get to do my my purpose things you know or i cannot be on purpose but this is being on purpose this yeah is, this is the work and I think that's a very very important to to see that and I think also the the ones who are not moms now watching this um or maybe your stepmom or your not a mom at all or but you always have things in your life that you take for granted which are you where you're blind to maybe it's just the inner work that you're doing maybe it's that the the, the partner that you're being for your husband or for your boyfriend or your girlfriend or for um, any friend, a person, your godchild, anybody, you know, these things do count too and are part of like, of your life's mission. It's not about almost, always about what you, mostly it's actually not about what you're doing. It's about yeah. what you're 
being. Exactly. It's about their being and not yeah. the, we're a human being, not the human doing. So yeah. we always think, oh, it's so good to do the things, but in the end, it's all about the presence. And yeah, I, that, that, sorry. And especially, um, we, we sometimes forget so easily that not doing anything and just reflecting um, can sometimes be even more valuable than just 100%. Do, 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 and get, be busy being busy. Yeah, but busy is so, it's so socially accepted, right? Being busy, yeah. super socially accepted. Well, do, a being is like, oh my goodness, she's lazy. But I actually even think that being present, it has so much to do with the new leadership paradigm mm -hmm. that we're entering and just being present in who we are yep. and embodying, embodying ourselves fully. I really believe that this is a new, the new, the new um, paradigm of leadership. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so I think that's you it, have right? one closing word of wisdom for today. A closing word of wisdom. Presence. Yeah. Presence. And you? I was just one second before you said presence. Ah! I said, Breathe in, breathe out, which comes back to present, which is the same. Yeah, exactly. Ah, we're so connected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much uh, for listening and um, please share your comments, feedbacks, questions, or if you have topics that um, you would like us to discuss in a in a future episode just please bring it on them. yes and we're re very very happy to answer them yes absolutely 100 percent. so thank you very much for listening and till the next time now i can try out some new hair yeah still also heute wird es wirklich nicht mehr besser. <lacht> Wir können ja noch als Bloopers ein paar Hairstyles. It looks like es ist eine Gagel auf dem Kopf. Ein Gagel. <lacht>